Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about the identification of the histological sections. Basically it is a practical part and uh, in some of the syllabus of the paramedical sections and also in the MSc standard of physiology uh, we have to do a practical where some histological sections are given and with uh, the identifying characters we have to write down the name of the histological sections along with the identifying characters. So how to do that easily? Uh, today I am going to discuss about that. So today I will discuss on nervous system. So regarding the contents of the nervous system, I am going to discuss three particular part which are very commonly comes in the examination. Uh, one is spinal cord. Uh, number two is cerebellum and number three is cerebrum or cerebral cortex. So uh, this is the section of the spinal cord as it will come under the high power or the low power objective of the microscope. Here you can see that uh, uh, this is the mid thoracic region of the spinal cord and it is the transverse section. And uh, the main thing that you have to see and you have to identify that is the central part. This is called the central canal of the spinal cord. And this is actually situated in the gray matter. So this is the gray matter you are seeing that uh, this highlighter is going on. This is the gray matter which is actually H shaped, capital letter H. And at the center of the gray matter you can see there is the central canal. So this is the way, this is the two particular identifying characters by which you can identify that yes, it is the section of the spinal cord. So the inside gray matter, outside white matter, along with different types of cells and the center part is highlighted. It is the central canal. So how to identify the spinal cord? Number one, presence of gray matter inside in the H form and surrounded by the white matter and uh, next the central canal in the gray matter lined by the ependymal cells so it is the transverse section of mammalian spinal cord so if you have to write in the your uh, practical laboratory notebook copy you can write in this way the identifying characters uh, one or two and then say, then you have to write that hence it is the transverse section of mammalian spinal cord because uh, generally this transverse section is given in the examination and if you don't write the transverse section it may depict that it is it may be the uh, uh, means uh, vertical section also Next, uh, I am going to discuss about the cerebellum. We know that the cerebellum part is very important physiologically in our body because it uh, uh, keeps the body balance. So you can see that it differs from the spinal cord with these folds. So here are different type of folds you can see and these folds actually differs uh, from uh, part to part. So it is called cerebellar folum. Cerebellar folum means the folded part. So these are the gray matter. And this gray matter actually contains different type of cells. You can see here molecular layer contains molecular cells. This granular layer is also there. This Purkinje cell, these are the Purkinje cells, these dark spots. And this is, uh, these are considered to be the main cell that is present in the cerebellum. So cerebellum is uh, identified by the folds when you will see under the objectives of the microscope that there is a folded part like this uh, which contains this uh, different types of layers that molecular layer uh, then granular layer and the Purkinje cell layer of different colors you will be sure that it is the section transverse section of the cerebellum. Here how the Purkinje cells looks like. So you can see this is, these are the Purkinje cells. Just look at that. You can surely identify that under the high power objective of the microscope. And these are the granule cells. They have the close association with the Purkinje cells for their working condition. And these are the outward stellate cells. So this is the molecular layer which contains the stellate cells. This is the in means middle layer, Purkinje cell layer which contains the Purkinje cells. And this is the granular layer which contains the granule 
cells so this is one fold that you were seeing then here comes the identifying characters presence of the gray matter outside and the white matter inside with the outer molecular layer and inner granular layer and inside uh, the presence of Purkinje cells layers we have seen now and the presence of Purkinje cells in the gray matter so it is the transverse section of the mammalian cerebellum of nervous system now cerebrum or the cerebral cortex you can see that uh, there are uh, dotted dotted cells these are the dotted cells this highlighted part yes these are called the pyramidal cells so in the cerebellum we have got the Purkinje cells in the cerebrum we are getting the pyramidal cells so these cells that is pyramidal cells are the main identifying feature uh, for cerebrum or cerebral cortex now this is how the pyramidal cells actually looks like see it's like a pyramid okay so these are the pyramidal cells there are some neuroglial cells also present this uh, oval shaped cells are the neuroglial cells then the accents of the pyramidal cells then the dendrites of the pyramidal cells and different parts of the pyramidal cells so with the presence of the pyramidal cells you have to identify that this is the section of the cerebrum so the main identifying part in the spinal cord that is the central canal and the H-shaped gray matter inside surrounded by the white matter. In case of the cerebellum, the main cells are uh, Purkinje cells. In the case of the cerebrum, the main cell is pyramidal cell. So here, the presence of the gray matter outside and the white matter inside, presence of different types of cells in the gray matter like the pyramidal cells. You can see the main cell is pyramidal cell, then granular cells small spotted cells, bed cells, stellate cells, fusiform cells, etc. So, it is the transverse section of the mammalian cerebrum or the, of the nervous system. So, these are the references which you can uh, see for your further study. So, thank you very much for your patient listening. If you like the video, don't forget to share it and please uh, subscribe my channel. And uh, this uh, identification of the histological sections, I will continue that into the part 2 where I will discuss about some other systems and I will uh, teach you the easy process of identifying that particular histological sites. So long. Bye-bye.